everyone, and welcome to this Video Song Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield, and today I thought we would have a look at um, something that um, I don't think I've shown you in a while, um, <coughs> or if um, I've even shown you it at all on this channel. Now what this machine is, is a Dell Latitude CPX-H500GT. Now I know what you're saying, but Jay, you've already shown us some CPXs. Well, yes I have. I've had a few of these, you know, unfortunately CPXs aren't necessarily the most reliable of Dell's lineup, but um, the CPH, CPXH just about works. Um, so, I thought I would um, actually uh, show it off. Um, it was um, this is a video that was requested um, by Road Geek, and um, you actually, if you have seen my previous video, the uh, Day in the Life of an Aspie one, um, you'll have actually know that this computer featured in that video as I was working on it. So I've installed Windows ninety eight Second Edition on it. So just to refresh ourselves, let's have a wee look at the machine's ports. So, first you have a um, Kensington lock slot, PCM CIA card bus type 2 or 1 type 3 slot, um, hard disk caddy, another what appears to be a Kensington lock slot that seems to be Two, I'm not sure if that's one or not, but um, yeah, something that looks like it. The left speaker, then on the front you have the battery, this one doesn't work, and a CD-ROM drive. Now I needed this CD-ROM drive, um, I actually found it um, in my uh, drawer, and that's after I'd bought disk drives for both my CPXs, because um, both of the disk drives had gone bad. But, um, so I bought a CD writer and a DVD ROM. The original plan was to put the CD writer into this machine and the DVD ROM into the CPXJ. But, as it turns out, the CPXJ, um, is doing absolutely, well, the CPX, this, um, I actually found out, I actually found out this CD ROM reader. So I thought, well, I'll just go with that instead. Anyway, um, continuing on our wee tour, we have another speaker on the right, headphone, uh, microphone, headphone line-in, S-Video out, and that's used to connect the machine to a television. Now, S-Video is only a standard definition interface, and while it is clearer than composite, um, it still will only offer you a standard definition image. So... You know, if you have your display set to something like 1024 by 768, what will happen is um, the image will downscale. Hmm. So it fits on your monitor. <clears throat> so really, it's best for PowerPoint presentations that generally have larger text and um, watching DVDs. Which if I installed the DVD-ROM reader into this machine, I could quite easily do. <clears throat> as it has ATI graphics. Okay, on the back we have a fan, VGA out, parallel port, IEEE 1284. Uh, we have a docking station connector, a US one single USB port, I believe that's 1.1 I believe, PS2 mouse and keyboard port, RS-232 serial, um, the uh, power connector, and the um, and an infrared part. What I also have to show you is um, this. Now this is a standard Dell Latitude C series floppy disk drive. Now the idea the idea goes that to install it, what one could do is. Remove the CD-ROM drive, 
like so. And then attach the floppy drive. And then you have your floppy drive ready to use in the system. Now, that might be good, you know, for, you know, most business uses. You know, you have your CD-ROM when you need it, you know, for installing programs or, you know, what have you. But then you have your floppy drive for when you actually want to do some work and save it to a diskette. But what happens if you're needing access to both the CD-ROM drive and the floppy drive at the same time? Um, you know, for example, if you're using a CD-ROM while working on some files that are on a floppy disk, or if you just simply want to listen to a musical CD while you work. Well, despite this being a dual spindle machine, it can be done. Because what Dell would sell you is one of these, and it is a, literally, um, a parallel port cable which can be used to connect your Dell Latitude C-Series floppy drive. So you've got this end which is proprietary and that will actually connect to the uh, port on the back of the floppy disk drive. So um, just plug it in like so. So you hear a click. And then this end goes into the parallel part. Now, that can cause a problem if you're using a parallel part printer at the same time, as this does not have a pass-through like a parallel port zip drive would. But, I mean, you know, if you're on the road, you don't have access to a printer while you're on the road, you know, this is perfectly fine. Um, I'm guessing if you had a docking station, it might have an extra drive or two in it. Um, I've not seen... I, I had a docking station for the C610 at one point, but um, I didn't really get to use it that much. In fact, I've never, I never used it and then I lost it. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug this machine in, just kind of plug everything back into it. And now we'll switch it on. So. Now, the CMOS battery in this machine is dead. So it's telling me that um, invalid configuration information. Please run the setup program, so we will. Um... And I'll set the time, even though it doesn't really make a slight bit of difference, because it, it'll just forget it. April 3rd, 2015. Now, I'll uh, cover some of the specs for you. This machine originally came to me with 256 megs of RAM, but I thought that you know, that would be too much for a machine like this. So I've taken some of the memory out, and I plan to install it in another machine. So, what we have is 8 megabyte ATI M1 graphics card, ESS Maestro 2E audio card, processor is a Pentium 3 500 megahertz with 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache, uh, system memory 128 megs, um, there's a 10 gig hard disk in this machine. I pulled it out of the Packard Bell Easy One Silver, which um, I had donated to uh, the AAA group, but then subsequently uh, died. Um, it's telling me that there's a floppy disk drive connected to the parallel part, but there's no diskette drive B. Modular bay, there's a CD-ROM installed in there. And um, that's just about it. I mean, I could just <clears throat> C 
So you've got on on these newer machines, you can actually choose the uh, boot order, um, and you know enable docking station Ethernet port. You know if there's a you know docking station, if you have a docking station with an Ethernet port on it, you can either choose to have it enabled or disabled. Universal Connect. Um, so that's, um, you know, for if you're using more than one Dell docking device, as it says on the right pane there. Um, and then you've got um, all your other um, CMOS settings. Yeah, and, and the battery does not work. It's toast. Right. Enough of that. Let's go into setup. I don't know what that said, but it said something about something being invalid. Should I be worried? I know that the infrared port will install itself. We're now joined by an Elmal 3 and uh, one of the uh, smallest Macs in the world. <laughs> It's it's literally um yeah it's about it's it's literally the size of a badger's badger. Anyway, <clears throat> we're we're in Windows now. Um, so as you can see, I've got Office ninety seven professional installed. Word ninety seven very very quick on this machine. The power of the Pentium 3500. There's also WorkSuite 99. Again, very nice. Um, this was the last version of Works to not have a uh, program launcher from within Works itself. Um, as Nathan Lineback would probably say, after Works 4.5, um, the subsequent versions of Microsoft Works became extremely webby. Um, you know, some might like that, some may not. Just depends, you know, just, just depends which way you swing, I guess. Then we have Microsoft Publisher 98. It's, uh, it's very, very famous for seeming to take the longest amount of time in the world to install from a CD-ROM to do a full install. So yeah, that's that's what Publisher ninety eight looks like. Um, and then there's Outlook ninety eight, front page ninety eight, project Microsoft Project ninety eight. Um, you know, and you can do all sorts of projecty things on it. So yeah, anyway, that's not necessarily what you came to see, you know, Microsoft greetings and all that. So, as this machine has got the ability to game, let's have a spot of Wadhams, Wadhams 2. Now, I've played Wadhams Armageddon, I've played Wadhams World Party. And I have played the original Wadhams, both on the PlayStation 1 and on MS-DOS. And, um... Hello! Hello! And I do believe that was available for the Mega Drive as well. But, uh, now we're actually going to play Wadhams 2. Right, set wrap. Uh, Wadhams 2 did not work on this machine. Um, just got a load of garbled graphics shit. So, um, it's kind of like, it was kind of like, you know when you put your monitor, when you put a CRT monitor to a resolution that it can't support and you got all that, those line type thingies and what have you. You know what I mean? Yep. It was like that. Uh, that doesn't look right. <laughs> yeah. All oh, right. Oh, wait a minute. That wasn't supposed to happen. 
I wonder if I need to install DirectX. Let's inst reinstall DirectX. Wait a minute. Oh well. Might be worth the old college try. If not, all I can say is that went well. I was going to show you guys worms, but it's not happening now. DirectX setup needs to reboot. <coughs> I suppose this would be a good time to talk about some of the other issues I've faced with this particular CPX. First off, um, there's been certain times when it's just randomly rebooted for no reason. Like when I was typing my uh, product key into the Microsoft Works calendar, it just suddenly shut off and rebooted back to uh, the Dell logo. Um, and it happened a couple of times actually, but you know, if 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 it becomes a problem, then I'll try using a standard Windows 98 install instead of the Dell CD. So, I mean, that might not be fully compatible with this particular machine. It seems to run fine with the um it seems to run fine with my Dimension forty one hundred, even though that came with Windows ME. And I have the Windows ME the the Dell Windows ME installation C D for that. Right, okay, so we've rebooted Windows. And now we're going to play some Wum Wurham's World Party. And it's quite amazing how little the formula seems to have changed over the years, even even down to... Oh, we're working now. Titus Games. Right, okay. You can play over a network or over the internet. Um, let's go to the options menu. <clears throat> All right, so now we have the uh, Scottish National Party forever immortalised in a Wadhams game. <laughs> That's brilliant. So, yeah. Anyway, it's um, now it's time to make another new team and uh, we're actually going to have the Conservatives. So once again, I will go and set the options and then I'll be right back. Look at all these horrible names! Honestly, ugh! You know, normally if you see that amount of bad stuff on a computer screen at any one given time, you automatically and generally correctly assume that your computer has caught a very, very, very nasty virus. Ugh. I don't feel right. Anyway, let's get off of this screen before I complete- before I really do get the bulk. Anyway, um, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna go with the uh, the graphics here. Now let's actually have a game. Let's set up a game. Let's create. Sorry about the buzzing. This is the sound of the optical drive when it's on tech over, so to speak. Right. Let's have a good. Let's have a look at this. I think. Um, skip. What have I done? Oh, unlimited. Right, let's... <laughs> let's make all the weapons unlimited. Yay. How to liberal really good. <laughs> let's, let's have the game descend into complete derp before we know where we are. I was I was playing this um, not long ago on the Dell Dimension Forty One Hundred, and I believe I had um, you know a couple of UK political parties in there as well, and just like 
the uh, retro computer group, so it was like, I think David Cameron blew up Billy, and then I blew up Nick Clegg, and <laughs> in game I would like to add, in game. I'm not actually going to blow up the real Nick Clegg. I don't like... I don't like the idea of going to jail. Anyway, we need somebody to point and laugh at. The leader of the so-called liberal democrats. Right, good. Um, right, use all the ammo. Right. Actually, let's, yeah, let's. Um, let's have uh, two vectors required. Wedums are long, yeah, let's. Okay, so that's that's absolutely fine. Right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have the uh, Scottish National Party, our SNP, versus the Conservatives. Right. <laughs> and we'll actually give them their... You can actually change the colours of these as well, which is quite good. Um, so I've actually been able to give the SMP their actual um, party colours. So they're in yellow and the Conservatives are in blue, which is a shame because blue is my favourite colour. Well, this birthday cake just came up on screen and blew up. Happy birthday to the ground. <laughs> oh, David Cameron just kind of. Hi, Chief. <laughs> yeah, of course, Nicholas Sturgeon sounds exactly like that. Hi, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> um. Right. Let's see. I mean, this this is going to be quite a difficult one. Um, because Nicholas Sturgeon's actually literally underneath a a log. <laughs> Oh, Jings. I didn't mean for our First Minister to go on a kamikaze mission. Rats. Oh, well, the can... You need glasses. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, nice one. All right, let's see if I can, uh, let's see if I can, this is the only time that I can legally put a homing missile on David Cameron. Oh. Completely. Ah, nice. <laughs> Let's get him. Seriously. So I'll show you better together. Yeah, plank. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's my thoughts exactly. Oh. <laughs> oh, well done. Right. Hey. Hey. <laughs> okay, let's uh, do you know what? Let's have Do we have um Get on with it. 
Okay, keep your hair on the right way round. I don't, I don't quite know how this is going to work out. There's Alex Salmond. David Cameron's down there. That's probably more likely to hit Alex Salmond than it is to hit David Cameron. Oh well. Or it could just fall in the water. I'm not really doing too well at this. Right. Now Michael Gove's having another shotty. Well done. Well done, Mr. Gove. You... You did really well. You need glasses. You need glasses. Alright, it's Alex Salmon's goal. Right, let, let me survey the map. Let's see. They're all in quite difficult to get to places of the Tories, and, and yet... Our guys are just sitting ducks. Bah! Unionist game. I know I'm using a lot of homing missiles, but... Can this... Oh yes! Just you wait. That'll learn you. <laughs> That'll learn you for being such a heartless politician. That couldn't have gone better if I'd have tried. Thank you. I must say so myself. Alright, I'm just going to try a regular uh, bazooka. Oopsie. Oh well. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> that sounds that sounds just like someone from Falkirk might say, Ah oh, you didn't scare me, pal Ah <laughs> uh, James. <laughs> That's quite funny actually. Check it out. Damn it. Oh, we'll get him. We'll get him. Fire. Well, thanks. You're just kind of making that easier, you know, for us to get to you. You need glasses. Oh, nice one. All right. The wind's in a favourable direction, so it is. Damn it. Oh well. Oh. Watch this. Oh. You nearly got him. Actually, I think, um, you know what? I think um, a cluster bomb might actually do the trick this time. Because if I think, if I aim it in that tunnel there... Check it out. Oh, shit. Missed! <laughs> yeah, thanks for letting my can. Fire! You're just now making it easier for me to get to you. You need glasses. Hi, Chief. Let's see another mortar. I'm gonna get him. Check it out. Later's Ian Duncan prick. Don't regret that. <laughs> Watch this. <clears throat> Thanks. Whoops. Well done, Cameron. Right, right. Where's the other? There's IDS, David Cameron, Michael Gove. I'm sure there should be another one. Oh well, maybe. Wait. 
Oh well, let's just um, let's just try again with the cluster bomb. Check it out. No, 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 no. Yeah, that went well. It's a bit of a cluster. Missed. All right, all right, all right. Fire! Fire. <laughs> oh, that was lucky. <laughs> Can I need glasses? Let's have a This is going to be quite difficult to pilot, but I'll give it my best shot. The super sheep. Oh. I knew it was going to be too good to pilot. That went well. <laughs> Alright, let's have an airstrike on these. Tell you what, I think I will port Alex. Ugh. Where? Get on with it. Where in the name of anything good is my pointer? Seriously. Right. I'll uh, just. I realise I've put, um... Oh. Oh. That's not good! You slammed the ball. Hi, Chief. Yes, nice one. Can we get these? Excellent. Hey. Hey. Ha I've got ya new. What to use? Maybe a sheep. That didn't go well. You'll regret that. Oh. Watch this. Yeah, that went well. Hi, <laughs> Chief. I think Alex Salmond is the best in the best position to get them. Right, let's uh
Do you know, I've decided I'm going to pretend like I'm playing on Kedpex. And give it some dynamite. Oh well, did more damage to them than it did to me. <clears throat> uh oh. Let's get him. Might be a difficult shot actually. There we go. Check it out. <laughs> Got him. Told you I'd get even. Fire. Whoops. Hi, Chief. <laughs> Told you I'd get even. Sorry, I just love firing, uh... Sorry, I just love... Oh, jinx. Homing missiles at Ian Duncan Smith. Watch this. Yeah, that, that went well. Thanks for the fireworks. You need glasses. Hi, Chief. Right, time to... Time to bazooka these idiots to death. Uh oh. Revenge. Uh oh. I'm over here. Ow. Bama. Hi, Chief. I think a tactical airstrike is maybe called for. Got ya. Told you I'd get even. David Cameron swam like a brack. Watch this. Oh, well done. Well done. Just, just, yeah, brilliant. The dynamite. The, the, Hi, Chief. the grenade fell in the water. My, my bunny fell into the ocean. My bunny. All right, all right, keep your... Okay, so um, 
the SMP1. Um, but um, I think that's enough of this game. And um, that's about enough fun and games for this Dell Latitude um, CPX. Sorry I wasn't able to kind of play like the other games that I was hoping. Um, but um, but there you have it. I mean, this, um, this is the Dell Latitude CPX. But before we go, what I think I'm going to do is um, a small canyon test, I think. Because apparently it's the law. I might actually, um, once I've finished filming, I might actually go back and play another round because there's something really quite, um, there's something really quite satisfying about Alex Salmond um, making Michael Gove and Ian Duncan Smith be in the sea. Um, <laughs> it's just a shame that Nicholas Sturgeon kind of expired, um, you know, right at the start of the game due to my obvious ineptness um but yeah i mean i obviously don't really condone fighting you know and, and the smp would not in actual fact do anything like that what you've just seen on screen up um because you know pretty anti-war in scotland we don't need anything like nuclear weapons anyway And that was Canyon. That was the Dell Latitude CPX. Um, I hope you have enjoyed. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, please feel free to subscribe and to like the uh, video on Frontier page on Facebook. But until then, um, in the meantime, um, I hope you'll all join me for my next video.